Okay, this is the uh, last um, four questions in this calculus um, thing here um, for the Saturday workshop. And they, we figured out that we've got this cubic equation and we figured out a whole bunch of things about it. Um, it's y-intercept, it's turning points and uh, all that kind of stuff. And what they ask, they say, for which values of x is this function concave down? Well, whenever they mention the word concavity or concave down or concave up, or if they say something like inflection point, then what you have to do is you have to take the derivative, and here it is, 3x squared minus 10x plus 7, and you have to take the second derivative. Just take the derivative again. So we go 2 times 3 is 6, and then we subtract 1, we get 6x. The derivative of minus 10x is just minus 10. You go 1 times minus 10, and when you bring it down 1, it's x to the 0, it goes away. Well, there we have our second derivative, and we'll find the inflection point. That's the x value. We can find the x value where concavity changes by taking the second derivative and making it equal 0. You know, when we take the first derivative and make it equal 0, we get the turning points there and there. But if we take the second derivative and make it equal 0, uh, watch what happens. We, add, we get 0 equals 6x minus 10. We add 10, divide by 6, 10 over 6. Well, that's the same as 5 over 3. That is the x value of the point where concavity changes. So if we go to 5 over 3, which is about 1 point um, whatever it is, it's about 1 and 2 thirds, 1.66. Anyways, it's right about there, a little bit in between 1 and a half and 2. And right at that point, that's where it goes from being concave down to concave up. And that's it. Maybe we could even, it looks like it'll be a little bit closer to there. I don't know. I don't mean to do that. But there it is. That's right at that point at 5 over 3, it changes concavity. So it's concave down to the left here, but it's concave up when it's greater than 5 over 3. So when is it concave down? The answer is when x is less than 5 over 3, then the function is concave down. Let's look at the next question. The next question says, find the equation of the tangent when x equals 0. Well, and when x is 0, y is minus 3. They want the equation of this tangent line right here. They want the equation of the right at minus 3. Well, if you want to find the equation of a line, you're going to need the gradient there. And how do you get gradients? Well, it's the first derivative. Well, we've got the formula for the first derivative. All we do is put 0 in there, and we get, hey, that's nothing and nothing. If we put 0 in for x, we'll get the gradient right at 0. Well, the gradient is 7. Gee, we got most of the answer here. We know that the gradient is 7. If Well, if the gradient's 7, then we know it's y equals 7x plus c. But hang on. Isn't C the y-intercept? Well, it is. And hey, that is the y-intercept. For this line, it's cutting y at minus 3. So C must just be minus 3. Now, normally, you might have a point, and you can substitute it in for x and y and figure out what C is. But we're looking at what C is. Well, there's the equation of the line. y equals 7x minus 3 when x is 0. And we had to use the first derivative to get that gradient. Let's look at the next question. Well, this one, you know, I used to explain it in a way that was pretty hard to figure out. And then Mrs. Fall, she showed me a way that was way easier. They have this thing, if f of x equals k, if our function was equal to k has three unequal roots, um, determine what values of k is. Well, when f of x equals zero, that's right here. When y equals 0, when f of x equals 0, hey, we're looking exactly at what goes on there. We just draw a line at y equals 0, and we can look at what's going on. Hey, it'll touch in exactly two places, at the 3 and the 1, and that's it. But what happens if it's a little bit less than 0? Say at y equals minus 1, or y equals minus a half. Well, I can see how many places it's touching. One, two. 3, we say it has 3 roots. 
Well, it's got three roots if I just drop a little bit less than zero. And it's got three roots all the way down. Look all the way down until we get to y equals this minus 32 over 27. And then it only touches twice. So all you have to do is just go to the places where it touches twice, and everywhere in between must be your answer. So k is less than 0, and k is greater than minus 32 over 27. So you just think, make a line, y equals, go to that place, and then you're looking at the places where it will touch. If Say they said it will, what places where it will have only one root. Well, right there, it only touches one. So if um, k was greater than zero, or it was less than this minus, it would only have one root. And that's the whole thing. Now, the last question. It's so easy, and most people don't get it because they don't know this basic thing. What if you had a question that said, write down the equation of t if this whole function is shifted to horizontally to the right. Well, all you have to know inside brackets in functions, if you add, you go to the left, and you subtract, you go to the right. And it's the same for trig functions, for parabola, for all sorts of functions. So all you do, oh, if I want to go to the right, I'll subtract. So just subtract 2. Minus 1 minus 2 is x minus 3. Minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. And there's your new function, x minus 3 squared, x minus 5. Just subtract 2 in the brackets, and you get a two-mark question. I did it on the computer. Here's the green one. There's the green one. And then I um, subtracted 2 from both. And there's the, there's the red one right there. And what happened? I went from 1 to 3. Everything. Look at this whole line. This whole green thing, everything shifted two to the horizontally to the right. And that's the end of the story. I hope that helped.